everyone and welcome to 6th, 7th and 8th channel of Baijus. I am your teacher Ankita. In today's class, we will be discussing about a very important chapter and the name of the chapter is Cell Structure and Function Under 20 Minutes. It's an amazing series of the crash course and I welcome you all. Welcome everyone to the channel. If you're here for the very first time, do take a moment and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Because only on this channel we are focusing on your examination where we will be going in detail and we will be discussing about your academics, right? We will be making sure that we all are completing your syllabus. We are discussing, uh, we have amazing content in terms of focusing on the questions different types of, you know, how we can write the uh, answers in the examination. Then, of course, we have mind maps, we have doubt solving classes, we'll have subjective and the objective questions. And of course, we have Baiju's mock test examination for all of you. So please make sure to take a moment and subscribe to this amazing channel where we will promise there will be a holistic development of the academics. On that note, we'll be starting with this interesting and super important chapter from the exam point of view. As we, you know that we will be discussing about the cell, right? Its structure and its function. So we here we have the roadmap that's what we'll be learning in today's class and we will be finishing this chapter under 20 minutes. So it's a very important for you to stay with us from the beginning till the end and on that note, let's get started. So first thing that we'll be discussing over here is the cell and its function. So we know that in the living organisms, we are made up of cells, right? We call cells as the fundamental and the structural unit of life, right? They are the fundamental and the structural functional unit of our life. Cells comes together and of course they form the multicellular organisms like us, right? And of course we have different types of unicellular organisms also. When we talk in terms of our cells, right, they help in, uh, in various functions altogether. So of course they help in the metabolic activities, they help in the growth and the repair of the individuals, then of course they help in the reproduction and they provide the structure to the body. So these are some of the important functions that we have for the cell. So please make sure you remember these. They can easily come for two marks, so please make sure to take a note of these. Moving ahead, now we are clear with that what is cell and what are its function. Now we will be discussing about the next important topic that is the cell and its discovery. So again a very important topic, I'm sure you would have seen the question in your examination and here let's take a look at this particular concept. So we know that cell was first discovered by Robert Hooke. This is really very important in the year 1665. He actually observed it in a dead bark right? and of course he saw these small uh, prison shape like structure that's why he named them cell. And the after a few years, right, then we have Anton Leeuwenhoek, he was the one who observed the first living cell. So we have these two important scientists, please make sure you remember the names of these scientists and because it's really very important from the exam point of view, not just now, but in your later years also. So please make sure to take a note of this. We are done with the discovery of the cell. Now we will be discussing about a next very important topic that how we have the organization of the life. So when we discuss about and multicellular organisms like us, we know that we have cells, right? The cells will be coming together and they will be forming the tissues. Now here's a very important one thing I want you to take a note of it. Now cells, the, the coming cells, right? They're, 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 coming, they're, they're coming together. It could be of same type right? It could be of same type or it could be of different types also and they'll be forming the tissues. These tissues will be forming the organs, then organs will be forming the organ system and eventually we will have the organism. So this is the organization of life. This is really important, right? It can come for a one marks question to write the organization of life or maybe, you know, they can ask you to write or maybe in a fill in the blanks they can ask, okay, after cell tissue, what will the next one? So please make sure you remember this also. So this is important and we are done with this particular thing. Now, we will be discussing about the different type of shape and the sizes that we have of the cells in different organisms and we'll be discussing about our body also. So let's talk about shape and size of the cell. Now, as we know, not all the cells in our body are 
same. We have different types of cells altogether and each of these cells have a very different function or I would say that they have a very specific function. Here let's take a look at the few of the examples. So we're here, we have cells which have different shapes and different size. So we first let's discuss about the epithelial cell. And of course epithelial cells are the one that actually provide the protection. They usually act as a barrier right and, and they are the one which have different different types altogether. They are present on our skin. So that's a very important. Look at the shape of it. It's very diff uh, different. From the next one that we are discussing there is a muscle cell and of course as a word name is their muscle cell. They are present in the muscles and they are the one they actually help in the contraction, the relaxation right and first they are the one that will be helping in the various movements that are happening in our body. Then of course we have another type of cell which is red blood cell over here. Now these are the very tiny cells right and they are the red blood cells. They have the hemoglobin right as a pigment that actually help in carrying the oxygen and the red blood cells are really very important. You look at the shape they are you know a disc like structure biconcave disc like structure and they have a very specific function also. Now let's talk about the animal cell. Now in the animal cell of course when we look at the animal cell they are different right. They will have their nucleus and other different organelles and they have a plasma membrane only. Whereas we have the next one which is the plant cell. Now animal cell and plant cells have definite difference between each other. In plant cell we will see the cell wall and of course we know that plant cells will be present only in plant cells only. And if they have two membranes they have a cell wall and they have a cell membrane. So and definitely the internal organelles that are there that are different from the animal cells also. So they have a very specific function. So we can say that by we can easily conclude by discussing about all the cells that cells have different shape and different size according to the function that they have to perform right. So in the examination they can be easily asked a question for two marks that why cells have different shape and different size. So you can write about it that you can uh, take one or two example. You can explain with that the different cells have different shape and size so that they can perform their function and then you can write the function of that particular cell. You can definitely talk about the plant cell or the animal cells or the easiest one RBCs that will be helping you to write your answer in the right way. So please make sure you take a note of this also. With this we are done with this particular topic. So we started with this right cell and its function, we, we discussed about the cell discovery, we discussed about the organization of life and we just now discussed about the shape and size of the cell. Now we'll be moving to the next topic which is a cell structure. Now we will be looking into the details of the cell structure and let's quickly take a look of it. So here we have the cell structure and first thing that we're discussing over here on this uh, uh, under the topic which is the cell structure is the cell membrane. Now cell membrane is present both in the plant cells as well as in the animal cell. In the animal cell it is the outermost membrane whereas in the plant cell it's not the outermost membrane it's the inner membrane that was there. It is a living membrane that means it is living and definitely it is selectively permeable. That means that it will be allowing only few molecules to move in and out. Not all the molecules will be moving inside right. It is very selective depending on the needs of the cell the molecules will move in and out. That's an important characteristic feature of the cell wall. Now let's discuss about the uh, cell wall sorry that was an important feature of cell membrane not the cell wall and now we'll be discussing about the cell wall. Cell wall is only present in the plant cell and not in the animal cells. They are uh, the important characteristic features of the cell wall is that they are dead and they are very rigid membrane. They're freely permeable means that all the molecules can easily pass through it and it provides and help in maintaining the shape of the cell. So important characteristic features of the cell membrane do remember them because they can uh, uh, this particular question can come in your examination also. So here I'm just writing over here for all of us to remember this. So we have discussed about the cell membrane we have discussed about the cell wall. Now let's discuss about the cytoplasm. Now cytoplasm is nothing but of course a jelly like substance which is present in the cell right and the cell organelles are suspended in it. So over here the green color over here and over here this blue little part that we have right the fluidy the jelly substance is nothing but the cytoplasm and all these cell organelles that are there present in both the cells are suspended into it. So we have the cytoplasm. So we have discussed about three important 
Now we'll be discussing about the most important organelle that we have in the cell and that is a nucleus. Both the plant and the animal cell will have the nucleus and nucleus is called as the brain of the cell or the center of the cell. It controls all the function that our cells perform. So it's become really very important. Apart from that, the nucleus contain the genetic material. This is really important, right? So please take a note of it. It contains the genetic material, which is DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. So nucleus has the genetic material and of course this is a genetic material that actually gives us a various characteristic features right not just in plants or in the animals but all the living organisms so this is really very important so we have discussed about the plasma membrane cell wall cytoplasm and the cytoplasm now we'll be moving ahead and taking a very special look at the eukaryotic cell now in the cells there are two different types we have eukaryotic cells and we have one prokaryotic cells. Let's discuss about the eukaryotic cell first. Eukaryotic cells are those cells which have a well-defined nucleus, right? So we here what we have. We have a nucleus, right? And this particular nucleus have the genetic material. So we can say that in eukaryotic cells, the genetic material is surrounded by a membrane. The genetic material is not freely suspended in the cell, but it is surrounded by a membrane. Basically, it is completely intact in a membrane. And of course, we call that thing as a nucleus. So, in eukaryotic cells, we have a well-defined nucleus and genetic material is enclosed in that particular membrane. Over here, we have the structure of the nucleus. So, of course, on the nucleus, we have the nuclear pores through which the molecules will move in and out. Very close to the nucleus, we have ER, endoplasmic reticulum. Then, of course, we have the nuclear envelope, a layer. Then we have nucleoplasm. Similarly, that we have in the cytoplasm, right? In the nucleus, we have a fluid, which is the nucleoplasm. Then, of course, we have the nucleolus. And we have the chromatin material, which is a genetic material. So, this genetic material is thread-like structure, which is uh, suspended in the nucleoplasm. This is really very important for all of us to remember, so please make sure you take a note of it. So, we have discussed about the eukaryotic cells. Now, let's discuss about the prokaryotic cells. Now, prokaryotic cells are the cells where the genetic material is freely suspended in the cell, and we call it as a nucleus. Over here, we can see. They definitely lack a well-defined nucleus and the genetic material is scattered in the cytoplasm and of course nucleoid. So this is really very important. They have the flagella, they have cilia, and of course prokaryotic cells of course are over here. The one of the common examples that we always discuss about the prokaryotic cells are the bacteria. So please make sure when you're writing about the difference between eukaryotic cells and the prokaryotic cells, please make sure to mention all of these points and always, always write the Example. Example is super, super important. So the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells can come for three marks for you. So please make sure T, uh, to take a note of this. Now let's move ahead to the cell structure. We'll be discussing about the ER. ER is the endoplasmic reticulum. And this actually helps in the synthesis of protein and synthesis of lipids. So smooth endoplasmic retic uh, reticulum helps the synthesis of lipids. It is smooth because it lacks the ribosomes that are not present on it. Whereas a, a rough endoplasmic reticulum have the ribosomes on it. Over here we can see the red colored dots, right? And that is a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So SER helps in the lipid synthesis and SRER helps in the synthesis of protein. This is super important. And from here, of course, it help, helps in the transportation of substance also. Moving ahead from the ER, we have, to go, we have the Golgi bodies. So from the ER, the molecules will be moving towards the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi bodies, where of course we'll see the packaging modification and the transportation happening in the cell. So ER will be sending all of the lipids and the protein to the Golgi bodies, where the Golgi bodies will be helping in the modification of these things proper packaging and of course sending you to different parts of the cell. That is an important role and that's why we call Golgi apparatus as a postman of the cell. So it helps in the packaging and processing of the proteins. Then of course in plant cells we have with them and with a different name. So this is important. It can come for one mark question. Please make sure you remember this. After the Golgi apparatus, we'll be discussing about mitochondria. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, where we will see the synthesis of ATP, the energy currency of the cell. 
so it's a double membrane bound organelle power house of the cell and of course here we'll see the production of ATP molecule that provides the energy and with this energy only of course our body will be able to perform various functions so again becomes really very important then of course we have one of the important organelles which is only present in plants and that is chloroplast so chloroplast is a double membrane bound structure right and it helps in carrying out the photosynthesis so chloroplast have a pigment which is chlorophyll and we know that the green color in plants is because of the chlorophyll and of course chlorophyll is the one that plays a super important role in the process of photosynthesis now chloroplasts have their own dna mitochondria also have their own dna and they can produce their own proteins similarly chloroplasts also have their own dna so that they can produce their own proteins so this becomes really very important point about the chloroplasts and the mitochondria so please make sure you keep a note of that also so we're done with the chloroplast and now let's talk about the lysosomes now lysosomes are the one which we are which we usually call them as a suicide bag of the cell why we call them because they contains the hydrolytic enzyme and when they see that cell is not performing properly or there's some damage to the cells they release all these hydrolytic enzymes and eventually we'll see the death of the cell apart from that lysosomes plays a very important role in cleaning out the waste material right so if there's any foreign substance which is entered right they'll be going and engulfing it and because of the enzymes what will happen it will not be there anymore so these are very very important they actually help in digesting the bones worn out cell organelles also and we also call them as a societal bag so this is very important it can easily come for two marks question so please keep a note of that also moving ahead to the very very important uh, organelle which is vacuole so vacuole in plant cell is definitely bigger and it's usually uh, the largest organelle that we see in a plant cell it's really very big as compared to the animal cell vacuole in animal cells the vacuoles will be really very small and they'll be multiple in numbers the main role or the main function of the vacuole is to help in the storage in plant cells we'll see a very single large vacuole in animals we will see small and many small uh, many vacuoles scattered throughout the cell vacuole helps in providing the storage and of course it helps in providing the structure also uh, and this definitely plays a very very important role now till till now we have discussed the about the different organelles and here we have right so we have the plant organelles we have nucleus er we have the lysosomes and we have mitochondria cell wall chlo chloroplast cell membrane lysosomes and vacuole and over here we have the animal cells right so there are few organelles which are present only in plant cells and there are few which are only present in the animal cells so in animal cells we'll have the centrioles which are only present in the animal cells and they help in the cell division now till now we have discussed about the cell organelles and uh, in general we are done with the topic which is cell structure now we'll be taking a look at a very very important thing which is nothing we are actually done with the whole chapter and i hope that you have taken note of all the important points so quickly we have discussed the whole chapter i hope that all of you have taken note of all the important points that we have discussed and i hope that you have taken note of all the important question that can come in your examination on that note we will end but before i go i have a very interesting news for you i hope that all of you are aware about the bns pt test which is happening at byju tuition center it's for class 3rd to 10th i hope that all of you have registered but if you haven't registered you can still register so we have the date of the examination which is 4th feb and 5th feb you have to go to the byju tuition center to attend this examination registration is absolutely free so you can click on the link which is in the description box click on that register for it and you can stand a chance to win a huge scholarship from byju so please make sure you are registering and of course after this test you will be getting a 15 page academic report now in this particular report of course we will have a lot of detailed discussion on various aspects your skill set your overall analysis your behavior your subject analysis and the career option so please make sure to register for this test the end date is really very close right from 4th and 5th feb so please make sure you register now then apart from that we have the crash course exam prep test so of course in the description box there's a you know we have a link go on that now that we have studied the whole chapter go on that there are questions for you try to solve this question and we'll be discussing them up ahead in our future classes so please make sure to take this test and on that note i'll say bye bye you know that we have got you covered 
And if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the that like button. Please make sure to share with your friends and subscribe to this amazing channel of yours. We'll be meeting really very soon. On that note, take care of yourselves and keep on learning with Baijus.